hi, welcome to learnhowtogarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener I'm going to show you how to construct a hybrid no-dig bed. This is a bed using the techniques of no-dig and growing in straw bales. It's one of the fastest ways to get a bed together for you to grow in. If you're not already subscribed to me at Learn How to Garden, there's a link above me. If you click on there, it'll take you over to our website, input your email address, and every time we put up a new film, we can let you know we've put one up by email. And it also means you get access to our newsletter, where we have films and interviews and other articles that don't appear on the normal sort of video sites. As those of you who follow me at Learn How to Garden know, I'm very keen on the concept of no dig gardening for vegetables. And that's where we construct a bed, and we construct it in layers of differing um, composts and manures and we add things like nettles and grass clippings to the bed to give the actual soil content, the finished uh, matter within the bed, a really good consistency and a really good diversity of nutrients um, and it allows things to grow very very quickly and it allows things to grow very healthily without lots of weeds. Another way of growing is by using bales. And for a long time people have used bales and they water the bales and they plant directly into them. And last year I sort of played around with the concept of a hybrid bed where we'd start off with the bales and within those bales we'd create a no-dig lasagna or layered bed system. And at the end of the season we could incorporate the bales into the no-dig bed which would give us far more humus and far more sort of bulk to our bed. Therefore we're feeding it with those bales that we've used to create out the outside edges. And the great thing about bales is they're so readily available for everybody. Where we are is at the far end of my allotment. If we look down below me here, you can see this piece of ground. Um, there used to be one of the old sort of, I call it a compost heap, it's where a lot of the stuff got dumped. It's got quite a lot of bindweed in it, it's quite rough, um, it's not been prepared in any way whatsoever. And we're not actually going to prepare this other than rake it. And if I go through the items that I'm going to be using to construct this bed, obviously the first are these bales of hay. If you can get straw, that's possibly better. When I water these, they will, because they've got seeds in, uh, get quite a lot of grass growing. So we're going to have to give these a haircut, uh, probably part of the way through the growing season. We've got manure. We've got uh, some bags of grass clippings that uh, came off one of my lawns this week. We've got a lot of cardboard. We've got, finally in the wheelbarrow, some sieved compost out of our compost heap over there. And to go with that, we've got, just behind me here, a great big bathful of nettles that I've cut. And we've got some old grow bags. And as we start to construct this, I'll explain what each one does and why I'm using it. And there's one thing I haven't talked about, and I'll talk about that when I put it into the bed, because it's possibly the most difficult of the ingredients. I use it because I've got it. If you can plan ahead, it is a great one to use, and that's wool. The first thing I'm going to do is just level off this earth very, very quickly, very easily. There's no reason for doing this other than the first layer, which is going to be our cardboard, can lie more evenly on it. I'm not going to take these weeds out. I'm literally going to level this off as level as I can get it, and that'll be it. The only thing I am going to do before I start putting the cardboard down is pull up the nettles that are in front of me here, and that's so that in a few minutes I can show you why I pulled them up. And then we're going to come to our first layer. And we're going to put three layers of cardboard on, and it's going to go right from the other bed all the way across, because in between my beds, in my allotment, I use chipped bark, and that will go straight on top of the cardboard. And the cardboard seals in all those weeds. It stops weeds germinating. These perennial weeds can't really get through the layers of cardboard. And it's much better than fabric. It's cheaper, it's biodegradable, and you should be able to get hold of it. The easiest ways to get hold of it, people like um, people who sell lawnmowers. All lawnmowers are ripe in big boxes and have to be assembled. They have big bits of cardboard. If anybody near you is having a new kitchen fitted, all their kitchen units will come in big pieces of cardboard. You get the cardboard, you lay it down, and you have to soak each layer. There's quite a bit of water involved in this. We don't have a hosepipe bam uh, at the moment, so it's best to do it in. And we're going to put three layers down, soak each one. 
All the cardboard has to have all the bits of plastic or sellotape removed from it. Everything else will break down. We've soaked all the cardboard. One of the things I love about this method is you can do it really quickly and you can do it now and you can plant now. We're in June and you'll still get a crop out of this bed. Well, we're going to plant it as soon as we've finished. So you haven't got to wait, you've not got to double dig through the autumn and all those classic things. This can work now. I'm using hay bales. These cost me less than 50p each, which is fantastic. It's actually cheaper than manure. And the reason for they're so cheap is they're a bit grotty on the edges. They're the ones that the farmer has had on the bottom. So it's a good time to buy them. He'll be pleased to get rid of them. The simplest thing you could do would be obviously have one and grow in it. Or you could have four and do one across, two on the sides, across the back, and feed, feed the middle. Don't wet them. They've got to be soaked, but do not wet them before you construct it. Our bed's going to be one wide, three long. I'll construct it here. You don't have to be so pernickety about it being dead level because it's not permanent. It's to grow until the straw breaks down and then we can incorporate it in. So I'll just put this together and then explain what comes next. leave yourself enough room for a path. These are, I was going to say bone dry, they're not bone dry, we've had a uh, quite a big storm this morning. We're putting them on their side because what I'm going to grow in here is my squash and some courgettes and because of how I'm going to plant them and how I want them to grow, I want them on the side. You could put them on their end, you'll just get a deeper bed and I'll just finish this and then we'll continue. We've got the outline of our bed. Leave the nylon ties on. If you take those off, it'll just fall apart and your bed sides will just collapse. When you read anything about growing in bales, the important thing that it'll tell you is that you have to prepare your bales in advance. And that can take 10, 14, sometimes 21 days because when these get wet, they'll start to decompose and heat up. Now, in this instance, that doesn't matter. Once we've got the outside shape, we soak the actual bales and they are going to start to warm up. But we're not planting in these bales. These bales are just the edges to hold in our no-dig bed. And because we're going to be planting our squash and our courgettes in here, by the time any of them get close to these bales, the heat will have gone from the bale itself. It'll be drier on the top, which would be fantastic for our squash and courgettes to fall over. But the other thing is, as it heats up, it will heat up the soil in the bed, thus making the bed quicker to produce. And one of the things that courgettes and squash love is warm soil. So we'll now soak the bales. Don't soak them before you put them out. They're quite heavy as they are. If you soak them, they are impossible to move. I'm quite strong and lugging a soaking wet bale around is not much fun at all. So I'll soak these. And then the first thing that I'm going to put on the bottom will be a layer of manure. That's so that next to the cardboard we've got lots of worms that can start the activity. We're relying on bacterial activity and worms to do all the work of actual cultivation within this bed. And they'll be fine because they can go down through the cardboard if they choose. Um, any roots from your plants can penetrate down, it's just none of those weeds can penetrate up. So I'll soak all these and I'll get a layer of manure on the bottom. Uh, and what we're trying to do is, like a lasagna, we're going to create layers. And the rule of thumb is two dark brown layers, one green. So for us, our brown layers would consist of our manure, or some more cardboard, or we could use paper chippings, uh, you know, out of a shredder. We could even use really finely chipped bark. And our green will be our grass clippings, and the nettles. The one thing that you, a lot of you won't do is what I'll just show you now. What I've got in this bag is old sheep's fleece. These bags cost me, again, 50p each. When farmers clip their sheep, imagine the bit near the end that gets very mucky. They can't sell it, it's of no use to them, they don't want it to go uh, with the fleece because it reduces the cost. If you've got a farmer anywhere near you, a sheep farmer, say to, you, to him, could you buy a bag of them for 50p? Because 
this wool is like magic. A lot of the old books talk about it. One of the best composts I've ever used in this country is made using wool. And what wool does, it holds moisture, which is fantastic in the bottom of a bean trench. It's fantastic in the bottom of anything to do with um, your brassicas and pumpkins. And as it decomposes, as the wool decomposes, and it can take a year to decompose, it releases about 7% oxygen by month. So it's a great thing if you can get hold of it. You need to plan it a bit in advance, but you know, if you live anywhere near the countryside, driving past a sheep farm, just say, you know, is there any chance I can buy the actual scrubby bits from the back end of your sheep? They'll know exactly what uh, you're talking about, and they're usually more than happy to sell them. Once you've got your first layer of muck, just gently tread it down. By gently treading it, you'll actually stop the bed getting very hot. If you leave it with lots of air, the more air, the hotter it'll get. Um, in one of our films, we've constructed a hot bed, which is slightly different to this. If uh, you were constructing this in the winter, you could actually construct it as a hot bed. And a hot bed allows you to get much earlier crops. So once we've done that, I'm going to now use this wool. If you haven't got wool, go straight to the next layer, which will be a layer of grass clippings just out of your garden. On one of my earlier films to do with no dig beds, someone said if you put grass in, it will grow again. Well, if you get grass clippings out of your mower, it can't. Grass grows from the bottom. It's one of those plants that if you cut it off, at the top it won't regrow, you don't take cuttings of grass. So use a mower, go across, get your cuttings and that'll be fine for this. When it comes to your green grass clippings, these have only been in this bag 48 hours and they're already incredibly warm. They'll break down so quickly and it's a light smattering of this. Remember two to one all the time. I'm not sure you probably can't see the steam coming off of it. And between each layer, gently walk it down and water it in. It's just like cooking. You're making a lasagna and it's going to cook. We just want it to cook very slowly, not very quickly. And it's fantastic for any of those crops in the summer, as I've said. Beans will do fantastically in here. Squash courgettes, pumpkins, tomatoes, outdoor tomatoes would love this. All of those crops. Walk it down and the next layer of brown or manure can go in. The next layer I'm going to incorporate is what I think is what makes my deep beds, my no dig beds, grow better than anything and that's nettles. Earlier you saw me pick up a nettle or pull a nettle out and this is them. These roots will grow in anything. They are one of the great survivors nettles. It's what makes them so fantastic for us to use. These roots penetrate the ground, they grow where there's lots of phosphates, they have quite a bit of potassium, quite a bit of phosphate in them and fantastic amounts of nitrogen. And what I love about nettles is one they're a great resource, two they're free, three there's huge amounts of research. I mean lots and lots of university research in France, which is renowned for its culinary expertise and how well they want their vegetables to grow, to prove that plants that grow with either extracts of nettles or kelp applied to them have a much higher resistance to disease, a much higher resistance to attack by insects. They are much stronger plants altogether. And I'm very fortunate I could use kelp on this bed, I'm near the sea, but a lot of people can't. So, Nettles are what most of you should use, but notice the nettles I'm using have been cut off. These are all cropped and they're cut. There are no roots on these nettles. Again, on a previous film, when I talk about nettles, I get lots of comments saying, don't put nettles in, they'll regrow. They can't regrow. If I cut your head off, you can't regrow. That's actually impossible. Don't pull them with the roots, otherwise they will regrow and they will outcompete anything in this bed. As you can see I'm using quite thick kitchen gloves. I haven't chopped them up. We're just going to layer them through the bed. If you don't have a lot of nettles what you could do is chop them up with a lawn mower 
put them in a bucket of water, cover them well, steep them for a couple of weeks and then the liquid that's produced dilute 20 to 1 and it makes a great feed. Lots of trace elements in your nettles, lots of magnesium, lots of iron, all really really important. It's one of the three feeds I make. I make comfrey, nettle and seaweed all myself. They're dead easy, they're all stinky and they all work really really well. Layer of nettles, watered, next layer of manure. And I just continue manure, nettles, manure, grass until I'm level with the top and then we'll finish the bed off and plant it. I've finished the basic construction of the bed. I could have made this a couple of bales longer. The reason I didn't is I was trying to see if I could actually construct a decent sized growing bed for less than £50. I paid £10 for one and a half tons of delivered manure. I paid 50p for the uh, hay bales. They're supposed to be a pound, but they're all the rotten ones, so I argued about it. The nettles I collected myself, um, I paid about £3.50 for the amount of wool that's gone in, but that's an optional one. One of the expenses you might have if you don't have any riddled compost or if you don't have any spent grow bags, you might want to go to uh, somewhere and just buy one of the big 120 litre bales of um, multi-purpose compost. Um, it'll cost you possibly about £8 and you're still under the £50 mark for all of this. The reason I chose £50, the wood to create one of my normal no-dig beds, uh, the no-dig potato bed that's on my left, well actually my right, your left, um, would cost you about that for tantalised timber. So if you can get away without that and we can use all this, I thought it was a great idea. These spent grow bags are queer, which is uh, the husks of um, coconuts that have been um, ground up. I don't particularly like it as a growing media. I tried it because it's one of the peat substitutes uh, and I wanted to see how well it would do and I, I wasn't over keen but you know we've got to get used to this we can't keep using peat. I finally find a multi-purpose compost that's based on bracken and wool that doesn't use uh, peat at all. It is, it's better than the peat ones I used to use and I'll talk about that in another film but back to this bale sort of hybrid no-dig bed. What we're going to do now we're going to put three of the old grow bags on the top, break them up and then onto the top of that and then rake them together is the most important constituent and that's this. This is our homemade compost out of the compost heap that's been riddled and this is the growing media along with the coir and the coir is really just being put in there to sort of aerate it. Remember plants need oxygen around the roots as much as they need water and as much as they need the nutrients. So the coir is to aerate it, we'll put this across the top, rake it and then We'll plant this with our squash and courgettes, but like I say, you could be putting sweet corn in here, you could be putting broad, uh, broad beans, you could be putting dwarf beans, climbing beans if you wanted to build a wigwam over it. It will grow all of those summer crops fantastically. If you constructed it earlier in the year, you could put your potatoes in. As I say, this is the no-dig potato bed we did um, earlier in the year and they are looking fantastic. But what we'll do now, open these bags, put this across the top and just rake it ready for planting. We've raked our compost, homemade compost and our coir together to give us our planting medium. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plant some courgettes in this bed and some summer squash and winter squash. The winter squash, they're pot marron, they're the bright orange French ones that you see that taste beautifully of chestnut when they're baked in the winter. Much better than butternut, I feel, but it's a personal thing. Three of those are going to go in the centre because they're going to be in the bed longest and I don't need to get access to them. On the outside edges, I'm going to plant two courgettes, which I grow purely for the flowers, so I can stuff and deep fry the flowers. I know it sounds a bit you know, indulgent, but I quite like them stuffed with cream cheese and things. And you want a variety to do that. The other two courgettes don't look particularly like courgettes. They're sort of quite knobbly, um, and they look more like a squash, but they're not. And I feel they have the best taste. And then I've got a couple of the patty pan, which like the little white flying saucer squash. Uh, I tend to, with all of those in the summer, uh, you put them on the barbecue, griddle them. They're fantastic like that and I just can't get enough of them really. The other reason we put our courgettes on the outside, we need to pick those first. We can walk around the bed easily. These bales won't be wet so you can sit on them if you want to. Really, really nice healthy root system. 
about six inches in, hold, firm with your fingers, that's it. No pressing down, no thumping down, doesn't need it. One the opposite side. Again, great root system. In, round. I like to do this without gloves on. I think you get a better feel for what you're doing. So this is Diafure, this is the for its flowers in the name really. These are my pot marrow squash. Again he says hoping really really healthy root system. Three dotted down the center, one will grow over the end, one will grow in the middle, one will grow this way. Dead simple, dead easy. I think squash really underrated, great because these ones can keep up to four months and they are again like all things that you grow yourself much much tastier than what you'll buy. I'll finish planting it, then we'll have a quick roundup. So that's planted and ready. Once the plants are in, water it really, really well. And you really wouldn't want to water this again unless it gets baking dry. We're on the 8th of June here in the UK. I will, in my subscribers newsletter for July, uh, which is, will be out at the beginning of July, I'll do an update on this bed so we can all see how much they've grown. If you do water it, soak it. What you don't want to do whenever you water is just water the surface. That will encourage roots to come to the surface. What we want to do is encourage our roots to grow deeply down through the bed, getting all those nutrients and access to all that moisture and all that water. Make sure that the bales are fully soaked because you want them to decompose and generate all that heat in the first couple of weeks to keep this bed as warm as possible so that by the time we start to hit the, the middle of summer, it really is kicking on. Like I say, I've chosen to do my squash and courgettes in here because I'm really keen, but any of the summer things, tomatoes, um, the beans, things like that would be just as good. I did this last year and was really, really pleased with the results. If you've got a new allotment, if you've got a new garden, it's one of the quickest and cheapest ways to get into gardening. I hope you enjoy growing like this.